thank you father for this hour but most of all the father we thank you for this life that you've given us to live father father our desire has been and will always be to please you in all that we do father we didn't come out of form or fashion we didn't come out of habit or out of religion we came because of a desire to have a greater relationship with you to know you better to understand you more father to become more like you in all our ways I thank you, Father, for each and every individual. I thank you, Father, for the heart being prepared to receive the uncorruptible seed of your word. And I thank you, Father, for the results that will happen because of their experience with you this day. Father, we forever give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it's in the name above all other names. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One more hand clap of praise. Shout of victory, voice of triumph. Amen. You may be seated. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. You know, all of that is wrapped up in a loving God we serve. God loves us so much. So much. And I think that's for, for us the hardest thing to embrace is the, the degree, the magnitude, the measure of love that God has for us because we have been so conditioned to judge and to measure love based on how others present love to us. And how many of you know that the love of God is way beyond any love you've experienced by anybody else? It does not compare. You know, love of man is conditional sometimes. You know that sometimes. It's, it's, it's based on what you can do for them or what you've done for them. But how I many know that God's love is unconditional? Yes, it is. Never failing. Yes, it is. How many know that any love that you've received from anybody comes from the source of all love, which is God? And you're only getting a measure from anybody else until you get it directly from the source. Amen. I'm excited. I am. I am green eggs and ham. I am excited. I'm excited about what God is doing, but most of all, I'm excited for, about what God has set for us to experience. Today, we're going to kind of continue the um, series and the message that we started on preparing for increase. I believe that God has something great, something awesome, something unbelievable even though we're believers, unbelievable. The Bible says, I have not seen nor have heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him and are called according to his purpose. But he's revealed it to his prophet. And his prophet is trying to show you, and I'm not saying I'm that prophet, I'm just a messenger, I'm just a vessel that God has chosen to use, but I believe that there's something great that God is doing. We declare this year, we declare this season is a season of expected increase, uh, a season of expected blessing. How many know that God is desiring to bless you? God is wanting to bless you. How many know God is going to bless you? If you would turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We looked at this one last Sunday, and we're not going to 
deal with all that we dealt with on last Sunday, but we're just going to kind of set the direction for where God is taking us and preparing us for it. And that's what it is, this preparation. How many know that uh, everything that we ought to receive of God is predicated on our preparation? It's never think it's based on what God desired for you. God desired it for you. God has always desired everything for you. When I say everything, I'm saying everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that has anything to do with his will, his purpose, his plan for your life. Then, you know, the question becomes, then why have we not received it all? It's because we're not in that position to receive it. We're not properly prepared to receive it. How many know that as a parent, as a, a wise steward, as someone that knows what's best for us, he knows to give us something too premature would not benefit us to the fullness. It will only sometimes devastate us or becomes a hindrance or a crutch or a leverage that the enemy used to divide, to conquer, to destroy, to kill, to you know, and, and, and that's what God is trying to prevent from happening. You know, as parents, you know, we understand that we want the very best for our children, but everything that they want to do is not the very best at that time. Not that it's not going to be a good time for them, you know. I mean, you know, how many want your child to own their own home and to live on their own? Can I get an Amen. I mean, you know, it ain't got to be out of the country or out of the state. You want them somewhere in the vicinity so they can come and visit, but you sometimes want them at your house. I mean, on their own. But you don't want them on their own when they can't take care of themselves. You don't want them on their own when it's not going to be healthy and beneficial for them. And, and I think that that's the thing that we sometimes don't understand when it comes to the things of God. God wants us to desire the very best for our lives, but he also wants us to realize and understand that in desiring that, we got to prepare for that. And if we don't prepare for that properly, then it's not a, a fall of God that we don't walk in the full manifestation of his will, his desire, his plan. Uh, uh, you know, if, if God says, you know, I want you to be a doctor, that's my purpose. That's my desire. You say, yes, Lord, thank you. I want to be a doctor. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Let it be according to thy word, O oh Lord. But you don't do the necessary preparation to become a doctor. You don't go to school. And if you go to school, you don't study. Now, what chance do you have of fulfilling God's plan for your life if you don't do the preparation and steps that it takes to accomplish that. And that's the thing that we're having to receive when it comes to this life of Christianity. You know, grace says it's already done, and it has been done. Grace says, I finished the work for you, and it has, but this is the thing. The, the, the work is finished, but you got to walk out the process. The end has already been settled, but you got to make it to the end. The steps has already been laid out, but you still got to walk it. If I tell you there's a million dollars for you at the bank, you still got to go get it. Some way, some way, some form, somehow. Now, I know we got a technology that says I can just get it off my app. Cash app, man. God said I ain't cash app in nothing. Because if you're too lazy to get up and get it, then you're not going to do it right when you get it. I'm just. <laughs> Convenience is never a substitute for slothfulness. It's a, it's, 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 it is an enhancement for your life while you are busy doing the will of God for your life. It's to keep you not having to stop doing what God wants you to do so that you can keep doing and receiving. But it's never, it's just like if, if God says, listen, I need you to do something today, and I know it's church service, 
uh, but I need you to do something, go somewhere, and, and be an instrument that I use today. And he said, but I'm going to miss service. He said, no, 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 you're not going to miss service because I got a CD waiting on you. But if you just decide to get your tired self up and say, I'm too tired to go to church, that CD is not going to have the same anointing on it to minister to you as it would have had if you was in God's will. Because it's not a substitute for slothfulness. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Preparing. Second Timothy, y'all all right? And, and let me say this. Ain't nobody perfect. So don't be throwing your stone and point your finger at anybody because of what they're not doing. Because when you point one, you got how many pointed back? <laughs> we all have room. We all, and that's the thing that I'm, 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 I'm wanting us to embrace is that if we look at the changes that needs to take place in us, we won't notice the, 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 the wrongness that's in others. Preparation. Being tolerance of others walk. Why? Because you are so mindful of your own. Second Timothy 2, and we're going to start at verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. We kind of kind of talked about that a little bit last week. Verse 21 says, and if a man therefore purge himself, and you know, there's a series talk about purging, and, and purging, you know, when they talk about that series, they talk about killing folks. How many know God wants you to kill you? Now, God don't want to kill you. God wants you to kill yourself. The Apostle Paul talked about dying daily. And we're not talking about dying to the things of God. We're talking about dying to your own things. Because when we are in preparation, in, and we're going to find out more about that today than we did last week, but, but it's about being directed. And it's hard to direct a person who has their own direction in mind. You know, it's hard to lead somebody who's already going in a direction they want to go. It's hard to stop a person from doing what they want to do to get them to do what you need them to do. Did you get that? I, I you know a, a lot of times people ask me, uh, Pastor, I got a question. You know, I just can't hear God like I'm supposed to. How come I can't hear God? I said, the best way to hear God is put yourself in neutral. Don't be going forward. Don't be going backward. Be at that place of neutral so that he can take you forward or backwards. See, if you so determined to go in a direction, God's going to say, I'm going to let you go until you can't go no more. And then you're going to look at me and I'm going to direct you which way to go. But until, because this is the thing. When he bought your life, he's not going to make you do what you should release to him to lead you in. He's not going to make you. He's not going to, you know, force you. I think we talked about last week, the difference between us now, because God could have made us as a creature that had no choice. He could have that had no choice, that says, no, 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 whatever I say, that is it, you robot. That means that when I speak a word, it is already programmed in you to automatically, without thought, without hesitation, without conflict, without resistance to do it. You don't think God can do that? If you don't think God can do that, you don't know who God is. God could have done that. That's not what God wants. God said, I want someone that wants me. I want the want to's. Did you get that? I want the want to. I don't want the one that have to or, or beg to or, or force to or, or beat to. I want the want to's. I want, I want, I want the, the, the desire to do what I desire for you to do, to be just as intense as your own desire to do what you want. Because when there's an intensity to do what you want, don't, one of my favorite mantra, don't tell me what you can't do, just tell me what you don't want to do. Because when you really want to do it, you find a way. 
You can't get up in the morning? Yes, you can. The right motivation? You get up. You can't stay up all night? You can. You can't run that long? Yes, you can. You can do whatever you, you can find money to do whatever you want to do because you do it all the time. It's just that God is not the motivation that intensifies your purpose like you are. And that's why you got to die. That's why you got to purge yourself. Purge yourself. Say, uh, well, and again, another thought. I'm just reminding you some things that I've said in times past. If your desire is stronger than God's will, you're going to call your desire God's will. If your desire is stronger than God's will, you're going to call your desire God's will just so that you can justify what you do. Because the first thing God's going to do when it's your desire or either his will, he's going to see if you can do it or not do it. God, I want to do it so bad. Let me see if you can wait on it. Well, I don't want to do it right now. Let me see if I can make you urgent about it. Because it's not about what you do. It's about what he gets the authority to control you in doing. Before God gives you his will, he's going to break your will. Or he's going to get you to kill it. Mm -hmm. and present your body a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And if a man therefore purge himself of these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master use, and prepare unto every good work. Now, you know, I got some words we want to kind of look at in this 21st verse of this chapter, that word meet. Greek word, E-U-C-H-R-E-S-T-O-S. Reference number 2773 in the Greek. It means easily used, useful, profitable. The unprofitable servant. How many know that easily used is not struggled in? When something is easily used, that means that it, 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 it comes with a flow. It comes readily. It comes without resistance or without hesitation. It comes. And, and you know, when, when, when you're putting on your little child clothes, it's easily put on because they're not fighting you in the midst of it. Like some of us do, God is trying to close us with an anointing to do something, but we don't want to do it. So we fight the anointing in it. And then you wonder why you're weak. Or better yet, why you're lacking. That word prepared in the Greek, H-E-T-O-I-M-A-Z-O, -E reference number 2090. It means to provide or to make ready to prepare to provide or to make ready you know I've, I've often testified about me working at a print company for 12 years and 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 you know one of the terms that we frequently use when we was working there was make ready make ready and i used to tell people all the time you know when they put a, a job on the press they already calculate how many wasteful sheets is going to be used in the make ready before they start counting good sheets? See, and that's the thing that you don't understand is that some of your struggles are the make ready. <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with the end result. It has everything to do with preparing you. Did you get that? It ain't got nothing to do with the victory because the victory is already established. It's got everything to do with you being prepared, made ready to receive. Because, see, see, the thing about it is, see, and, and it's proven over history, time, it's proven that when a person receives things that is, 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 is not noted of the value when they receive it, they be wasteful of it. Mm -hmm. Give somebody a free reign to do whatever they want in whatever situation, 
look and see how wasteful they are in what they do. Why? Because they have no value on what it cost them because it didn't cost them nothing. But in your preparation, there's some struggle. It's to make ready you so that when the victory comes, it becomes value. Prior is. And I think that that's, that's, that's hard for a Christian because we want it now. Is Jesus wanting the victory for me now? How come I can't get it now? Because you won't appreciate it now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Prepare for every good, good Greek word, A-G-A-T-H-O-S, reference number 18. Good, benefit, well, benefit, well, Again, I, 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 good comes out of us because great is in God. I'm learning never to refer to, I know God is a good God, but God is better than good. He's great. We can be good because God is great. And, and, and so can, can, can we be great? I understand now when people get up and say, less of me and more of you, that's good. None of me and all of you, that's great. <laughs> Did you get that? When there's no evidence of you and there's only evidence of God working through you, that's great. But as long as there's some of you, it's good. It's good. Good is God extending himself through you. Great is there's no more you. It's all of God. <laughs> Y'all going <laughs> to, yeah, that's all right. You can, it's, you can pin a pat. It's, it's fine. I'll tell you, once, once you go through a couple more things, you're going to value those things. <laughs> you're going to value none of me. You know, it don't take but a couple more times to hit your head on that wall that won't move because of you. But only would be removed because of him. Again, the, the last word we're going to look at in this is work. Greek word, E-R-G-O-N, reference number 2041. It means an act, a deed, doing, labor labor and and nothing we do no act we perform no work we uh, participate in makes god any different everything we do in the form of work labor deed doing is is god using it to make us who we supposed to be you got to believe that you, and I think that that's the thing that, 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 let's say in the natural, you got a job. You employed by an employer. How many of you are going to work that job if you don't see any benefit for you? I heard the song, to your glory, I will do anything. I play sing. Okay, but, but, but this is the thing. God is allowing us to do not because he is in need. It's because it's the tool, it's the avenue that he's using to shape us, to form us to prepare us to be what he's called us to be. Nothing you do changes God, but everything you do should change you. What if after I preach the gospel, I myself become a castaway? I've done all these things. I've fed the full. full. I've done this and this, this, but have no love. Didn't say I didn't do nothing. I just didn't be nothing. I become nothing. 
Because everything that we do and everything that God is leading us in is his attempt. And when I say attempt, God's attempt is predicated on our submission and agreement because he's not going to force us again. But he lays it before us and says, this is what I've placed before you. Life and death, blessings and all of these things that you choose. You choose. So again, all of this is, is, is God. If you don't see you as the greatest benefactor of what you do for God, then you are going to get weary in well-doing. Because I'm going to tell you, everybody is not going to respond like you think they ought to respond. I don't understand. I did all of this and I didn't get not one thank you. <laughs> I don't understand. Seems like to me that folks ought to be more acceptance and receiving of what God is doing through me. You ought to be more thankful and grateful of what God is doing to you and for you because he's using you. See, I see what I do as an honor and a privilege. Because, you know, I realize this. You know, everybody in the mama know that I fought being a pastor. I fought everybody. Anybody and everybody. And I, I'm so thankful that, 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 that I didn't just, you know, well, Lord, I know you want me to be a pastor, and I don't want to be it, but I'm just going to submit to it anyway because I know it's your will. It just ain't my desire. That, that wasn't, because I understand a heart to serve. Somebody wrote a book. <laughs> a heart to serve. And I understand that God honors the heart before he honors the act. And no matter if I line up, he don't receive anything until my heart is in it. And my heart wasn't in it. I'm telling you, because I know people, Christian. But I realize there's no way. See, listen, you don't have to measure who I am. You don't have to put your endorsement on the measure of growth I am. I know me. And I know that there's no way possible, there was no way in God green earth that I would be who I am without being put in this position and doing what I do for God. The revelation and the understanding and the insight and the concept it may not be great to you, but I know me. I'm not that smart. He is. And see, that's the thing that without being put in this position, I would have never grown to this level of whatever you may think I ain't. I know who God says I am. And so that's the thing that some, some of your greatest development it's coming through your strongest resistance. You just done put your foot in the dirt and said, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, ain't. And God said, we'll see who can wait the longest. <laughs> we see who can wait the longest. I've been waiting, you know, I said I was coming soon and it's been over 2,000 years and soon is still soon. We see who will wait the longest. Sarah, Abraham, you're going to have a child. Oh, here we go. It don't matter how long it takes. It's going to happen. You know, I, I, I love the fact that that, that you think that what God wants has to happen in a time frame that is conducive to your mindset. You even think that what God wants to happen has to be in line with your lifespan. See, what you don't understand is God understands seed time and harvest. 
God understands generation. God says, if I can get it done through your great, 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 great grandchild, I still got it through you. And Abraham shall a seed come. Now, how many generations was it? It wasn't Isaac. I mean, it came through Isaac. But it wasn't, it, come on now. It went on. Have you ever heard the begots? Have you read the begots? You know how long the begots? And what's going to be God? Who and be God? Who and be God? And it came all the way from Abraham to Jesus. So when he told Abraham, and your seed is going to outnumber the star, Abraham, it wasn't based on Abraham's time frame of mindset. He said it's based on what I say. So I'm telling you, we're going to see who can wait the longest. Until we all come into the unity. Or it seems like there's a separation. He's still waiting. And we're going to see who can wait the longest. Look at Psalm 37. Y'all doing all right? Y'all ready for that turkey, ain't you? Uh -huh. Psalm 37. Oh, this is a good chapter. We're not going to read it all. We may kind of pick do it, but we're not going to read it. Read it all. Verse 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and conjunction, conjunction, what's your function? Connecting phrases and thoughts. See, ordering your steps and delighting in his ways is Conjunction is a well, I'm going to do it, but you're not delighting in it. So it's like you didn't do it. Well, I'm delighting in what the law wants, but you ain't doing nothing. The law didn't call me to some great thing, but you ain't doing nothing. I'm, nothing from nothing, leave nothing. You got to have something. Even if it's a little something, it has to start off with something. Again, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his ways. When you look at that word order in the Hebrews, reference number 3559, K-U-N, it means establish, fixed, prepared, applied, appointed. Ordained, fashioned, provided. Come on now. All of these things are, 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 are ordered. That means it's fixed. That means that I, I, know, I know some of us in our minds and in our heart don't like the path that God has for us, but it's already fixed. God saw the end from the beginning, and he established it before you got here, and he ain't changing his mind because his mind don't need to be changed. Yours do. <laughs> he, said, don't, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will. Yours are your 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 designs when it doesn't line up with God will never be the best method, the best way, the best path for your life. Now 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 I don't know your path. I don't know your 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 your, your journey. I don't know what you've gone through, or what you've been through, or what you're in the midst of. But let me give you some advice from a person that have some experience with some things. I don't care how enticing 
and how luring and how glitter it may seem to do what the world wants you to do, it is never going to be better than what God has for you. I'm, I'm, well, you should don't. Listen, I'm either all in or all out. When I was out, when I was out, I was all out. You didn't party like I party because there wasn't no party until I started partying. I'm just, I'm just saying you don't, you, you don't know how to drink because I didn't drink. I drank. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you. That, 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 that I've been on both sides. And, you know, when you're straddling the fence, it's kind of hard to decide which side you want. But when you're all in, yeah. and you get all in, there is a big, huge difference. Some of you just like this. Or do the stinking leg. Either you out and you jumping to God every now and then, or you in and you still playing with that thing. And then you wonder why it ain't leaving, because you don't want it to leave. God ain't gonna take something you desire. But it ain't good for me, but you like it. When you stop liking it, you get rid of it. I know this, I know this ain't a good message. Y'all don't like this message. We want to hear about the, 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 the amazing grace. Let, let, let me say this. Can I say this? You know I'm going to say this anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for permission, but I already got it. The cross is a place of exchange. It's a place of exchange. You are not empty by no way, no means, no how. That means in order for more of God to occupy your space, you got to give up some space. Did you get that? You got to give up some space that you done kept away from him with a sh closed door and a lock on it. In the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark. Nobody knows but you and God. Don't, but don't ever think God don't know. So now you got to give him space. And, and, and let me tell you something. The thing that God wants the most is the thing you love the most. Abraham, give me your son. Your only begotten son. The one that I made the promise to you about. Give him to me. Wait a minute, God. Now, 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 you know, now, well, now I know you were a miracle worker and you worked a miracle between me and Sarah, but that, 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 Yep, that was that was years and years ago, and, and I knew I had one good shot. <laughs> but I don't know if I got another one. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily because if God wanted him, God would have never stopped him. God didn't want his son. God just didn't want his son to have a greater love than he had in Abraham. He said, because Abraham, there's some things I'm going to instruct you to do. And if your son, if you love your son more than you love me, you're going to struggle in what I'm telling you. And he did struggle. We all struggle. But when push come to shove, see, that's, that's the thing that people, you know, haven't, made a resolve in, when push come to shove, when the rubber meet the road, when, 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 when there is no turning back and there is no retreat, there is no, that when, 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 when it has to happen, what decision have you already made? For God I live, for God I die? Or will you compromise? 
I mean, when, 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 when there is nothing else, will you throw your hands up and say, the heck with it, and go on about your business, or you gird yourself up like a man and say, no, 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 no. Listen, I've made plenty of mistakes, but I will not retreat. I will not cave in. I will not faint. I will not. I'd rather die believing than to give up my belief. I'm just, I'm just saying. Because he goes about the enemy seeking who he may devour. Enticing you. Say, uh, uh, what can I do to get you to compromise? Nothing. Nothing. What if I threaten your life? I die for you, Jesus. No, before the day end, you're going to deny me three times. Peter. I'm just asking. What, 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 what's out there that, 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 that got you so wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in it that it confused you about your stance with God? And then you wonder why more ain't coming to you. Why? Because cause, cause the devil got that trump card on you, and any time he needs to throw it, he knows how to flick it. Bam! You know how you're playing spade? Wham! Bam! Come on. No, 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 no. I got a new hand. Because I got a new dealer. And what he's giving me, you can't handle uh-huh, I got all the spades in my hand. Or however you want to, uh, full house, or whatever game you play, you know. You, you got you to gotta see it as the winning hand. Not a compromise hand. Not a hand I got to struggle in. Mm -mm -mm. And he delighteth in his way. That word delighteth. Hebrew word, C-H-A-P-H-E-T-S, reference number 2654. It means to incline, to incline. When you incline, that means you usual. That's something you do usual or favorable or constant. No, you are inclined to drink coffee, a cup every morning. That's not saying that that's what you do religiously every time, but your normal schedule, that's what you are inclined. I want you to be inclined to obey God, because you're not going to obey him 100%. Ain't nobody going to do that. But don't let your incline be to disobey him. Hmm? See, when you incline, that means that that's your, that's your desire. That's your delight. My, 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 my ritual is to, again, to bend, to bend, to bend, to bend. See, if you're too rigid, you're going to break. To be pleased with. To desire, to favor, to have pleasure, to like. It's amazing. Now I, I I know I know love is the thing. You know, love. What the world needs is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that just so little. What the world needs, okay, love. I love the law. I love the church. I love ministry, but you just don't like it. And until you start liking it, there's never going to be a fervency and a passion to succeed in it. Hmm. What you like and have a passion in, you stand for and you fight for. Mm -hmm. 
Psalm 37 and 4 said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight thyself. Reference number 5026, Hebrew word A-N-A-G. It means to be soft or pliable, 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 bendable, shapeable, I'm not going to get to it today. And it's all right. But you got to realize and understand that you are made to be influenced in the things of God. And being made to be pliable or, or bendable also makes you vulnerable to the influences of the world. That's why you have to guard your heart, guard your ear, guard your eye, because you are pliable. And whatever you are feeding, what feeding from, or whatever you are listening to, or whatever you are attending to, is what's going to make you, shape you, bend you, mold you to what you are. And, and it's sad to say that a lot of Christians are not listening primarily to the things of God. And I'm going to tell you something. There is a difference in the things of God and the things of God. So, wait a minute. Explain this. This is my hand. This is my foot. They are part of the same body, but they have different functions. They have different needs. They have different Things. And, and that's the thing. That just because it's the things of God, that means it's yours. And what we have the, a, tenden, a tendency of doing is allowing somebody else's belief, passion, and fervency, and they have it, and that's good to shape us into a wrong direction when that's not God's. See, again, the main thing that God is trying to get us, I love that God uses people. But the biggest, greatest, and I've said this many times, the greatest, biggest influence that should be in your life is your personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. Because there's some things that you cannot get through an interpretation. You have to get it from a relationship. And if your relationship is not strong enough to keep you on that path that God wants you, somebody's going to give you a part of God that's going to lead you away from it. They're going to tell you, well, we know it wasn't meant to be, but what we're going to do is you got two hands and you're missing two feet. So what we're going to do is sew one of your hands on your feet on your leg, we'll give you one and one. Well, you got two. But as good as this may be on your leg, it's never going to be better than it is on your hand, on your arm. You understand? Because that's that's that. That's the purpose. That's the intent. It, it works best when it's in the best place. It can always be in substitute and an alternative, but God doesn't work in alternative methods. He works in, I have a plan, I have a way, I have a direction, and it's the perfect way, and anything else is going to be less than my best. People wonder, Pastor, why don't you just tell people what you want them to do? Because I want them to do what they believe God wants them to do. And if I tell them what I believe God wants them to do, what if they don't agree? But if they figure it out that I'm where God wants me, doing what God wants me to do, there is no alternative and there's nothing better there's not a better place. There's not a better action. I'm where he wants me. Now he, now, now he. Y'all remember that? 
get on the first base side and, and squat down, and the, and the pitch is going to look at you and say, I ain't, I'm not throwing it to the first base. You got to get in a position behind the plate. That's the position behind. I'm the pitcher. I have an anointing. I have a blessing. I have increase. But I'm not going to throw it to you where you want to be. I'm going to throw it to you where I call you to be. Now position yourself behind the plate. Wherever the plate is for you, position yourself. Okay, I'm, I'm behind the plate. He said, now give me some sign. Uh-huh. You slothful. I don't throw that pitch. You're a murmur and a complainer. I don't throw that pitch. You're a backbiter and a divider of the brethren. I definitely don't throw that pitch. You got to start giving me some good sign. Faithful, diligent, loyal, committed. Mm -hmm. I'm, listen, I say this. You may not be the best at what you do, but you can always give God your best in all you do. I'm not the best in everything, but when I put my hand to it, I'm going to do it to my best of my ability. And that's what God is requiring of me. Oh, you want to go through the motion. God said, I don't throw that pitch. I don't throw, I don't throw hypocrisy. Smile in your face all the time. I don't throw that. The back step. I don't throw that. Mm -mm. You're jealous. I don't throw that. You envy. You 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 self centered. I don't throw that. Mm -mm. You you don't play well with others. How you gonna get along in heaven with everybody when you don't play well with nobody? I don't throw that pitch. I don't throw that. You're quick to think the worst and the best. How I'm going to give you an anointing of increase when you have a spirit of division? That means you're going to spread increase. You're going to spread that increase to divide quickly. I'm just talking. Ah, um, preparation. Preparation, people. Ain't, ain't nobody preparation but ours. You, me, us, them. One-on-one. -on -one. Preparation. When we start being more concerned about who we are than what others are, true success is not everybody changing and conforming to what you think, what you believe, and what you want. True success is when you've changed to where they don't affect you no more. That's what God wants. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Webster, I'm, I'm, real quick, and Webster defined pliable as easily bent, flexible, easily influenced, or persuaded, adaptable. Adaptable. He wants you to be pliable. He just don't want you to be a pliable to the influences of the world. He wants you to be pliable to the things of God. And the things of God is not the things of the overall God. It's the things of God of your positioning, your purpose, God's will, and God's calling for your life. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Before I welcome Minister Angie to the pulpit, we have some first fruit offering. We're going to lift it before God and Allow God to do his thing. Father, we thank and we praise you for the heart of this believer, Father, that offer unto you the first fruit offering. Father, you said if the first part be blessed, so shall the lot be blessed. So, Father, whatever they are standing in agreement with you for, Father, let the fullness to the overflow invade their life, invade their household. Father, let them have no lack, have more than enough. Let them be blessed to be a blessing. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you welcome Minister Angie Darden to the pulpit? Glory, 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 glory. That was a good, that was an awesome message. Awesome message, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Uh, it's offering time, everybody. It's offering time. 
It is offering time to our faith, to the congregation. If you're in need of an envelope, just raise your hands and our ushers will be honored to serve you today. And to our live streaming audience, we thank you for being with us today. And if you're led by God to sow into this ministry, you can go to our website and click on Donate Now with Giblify and follow the instructions. Or you can download the Giblify app and select World Covenant Christian Center. Amen. Amen. Well, we are in our almost in a closing year, and we still want to remember that we have a building fund. Somebody say building fund. Building fund. And this repeat this after me because that we want to remember. We have to remember why we give to the building fund. Why repairs, Repair. replacement, replacement. Maintenance, maintenance, and expansion. And, expansion. and I added one more word: development. Develop. So that's why we're still involved in our building fund. We did a great job this year, but there is more that work that needs to be done by our giving. Amen? Amen. And um, so now I have a, uh, what I want to talk about now. We are in a year of expected blessings. Amen? Amen? Bless God. And when I looked at that word expected, it had an ED on the end. And that says to me, past tense. And these Expected blessings are the ones that we have believed for for a mighty long time, that we're going to receive it. We're just waiting on a word that this is the year. And we're also waiting on the word uh, manifestations of those things in our lives. So we have to stay in the spirit of what? Expecting. So how do we do that? Well, I got my answer, and this answer is coming to you all, from the words uh, expected and expecting. And one thing I found out is uh, Elder Sean was doing uh, the prayer, and when Pastor was uh, talking as well, when he was met, uh, ministering to us, I found out that the enemy comes looking for our expectation. He comes against our looking and going forward. So in the definitions of expect and expecting, it means to anticipate or look forward to the coming. But the word that came up was so awesome to me in the Western Dictionary was the word think. And so that reminded me of Romans 12, which Pastor has just said, the renew, be you transformed by the renewal of my mind, of our mind. And so in this expectation, expecting, our minds have to be renewed. So our mind's going to pick up, play a huge part in receiving what God, for the manifestation what God has for us. And that word think is the form of how in the mind. It also means to remember what God has already done. It means to reflect on or ponder the matter over and over again. So what am I supposed to be thinking? I need to be thinking about what God said about the expectation of what God said he's going to do. Because God is a God that cannot lie. He can't even act that a lie. So if he said I supposed to be in expectation of things that he told me, then it's a good, it's, it's all good. Amen. So I went to the book of Amos. In the book of Amos, God goes from a strong rebuke and of judgment to and call them a sinful kingdom. And then God promised them in this last book, Amos chapter 9, of restoration to be fulfilled in the Masonic line. And so I looked in um the Amplified, or Amos 9, chapter, I mean, verse 13. And it said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sow the seed, and the mountain shall drink, drip, uh, drop sweet wine, and the hill shall melt. That is, everything, therefore, bearing and unfruitment shall overflow with spiritual blessings. And so, but that wasn't good enough. I still have some expectation. That still one, I want to hear something, hear something else. So I went to the Message Bible of Amos 9. And I also want to make sure y'all know what sweet wine means. It means happiness. It means friendship. It means transformation. It means provision and life. Also, that mountain where it was going to come from, it means promotion. It means upgrade, elevation, and advancement. So what does that so what does that mean? In Amos chapter 9 in the in the message Bible it said God said yes indeed it won't be long now. Now that keep your faith in check. 
when you know God has said it won't be long now. He says in Amos chapter 9, now I want y'all to really listen to this in the message Bible. He said things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. <laughs> One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. God said, I'll make everything right again for my people of Israel. But we saying God going to make everything right for the people of World Company Christian Center. Amen. 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 So what do we have to do? We have to stay in a spirit of expectation. We have to stay in a spirit of obedience of what God is saying, what God is doing, and what God is telling us to do. Amen. Amen. So repeat this. It won't. Be long now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers may serve God's people. Father, we thank you for these offerings. We thank you for this task, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and the expectation, Lord God, you have in us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for it won't be long now, God. Lord God, that we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Father. And God, we just thank you, Lord God, that every person, God, that has blessed these buckets, Lord God, that it will be given back to us good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, God, all the way over in the name of Jesus, Lord. So, God, we thank you for the spirit of expectation and obedience and focus in our giving this morning, Father. And this giving and expectation, God, and obedience has moved this offer from the natural to the supernatural in the name of Jesus. So, God, we give you praise. Praise for the outcome of these offerings and tithes in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome back. Pastor Ezel to the pulpit. You can stand to your feet. Glory be to God. Amen. God is doing some great and awesome things. Lifting up holy hand without wrath, without doubt. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love, honor, and adore you. We thank you, Father, for this time as we leave this place, but not your presence. We thank you, Father, for the angels that go before us, uprooting and destroying every works of the enemy so that we can arrive safely, giving you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hug somebody, love somebody, bless somebody with God's presence.